Webheads, the road to 10K is in full swing, so you're gonna wanna pay attention to the end of this video to find out what you have to do to win that mystery prize once I get to that 10K. Until then, let's enjoy After the Poll. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, always helping you, making decisions on what comic books to buy. And today, guys, I'm bringing you another episode of After the Pull. That's right, fans. This is the video series where I tell you if you should pick it up or pass it up. And we're going to talk about five exciting comic books today. And here are the books that we're going to be talking about. First is going to be The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 61. Then we had the long-anticipated Non-Stop Spider-Man, issue 1. Then we have the continuation of a very underrated comic, but it's been very good. This is Taskmaster. This is issue 4. And then next, we're going to be talking about a book that's been a long, long, long time in the making, and that's Children of the Atom, issue one. And then last but not least, everybody, we're going to be talking about a book that I was a little skeptical about. Did we really need this? And this is the Joker. This is issue one. All right, everyone, so let's get these reviews started. Just to let you know, there are spoilers when I talk about these comic books, so if you have not read your comic books, I definitely suggest read them and then come back and watch the rest of this video. So the first book that we're going to be talking about today is The Amazing Spider-Man, issue 61. That's right. We've been waiting for this so-called new costume. Why is he wearing it, right? He also gets a new job. This is a new error based off of the events that happened with Kindred, you know, Nick Spencer promises this will be the new beginning for your favorite webhead, okay? So, how does this costume come to be, all right? Well, again, based off of what happened with Kindred, finally, Peter is over the whole situation. Kindred's captured, whatnot, and right away, you get to see him thrusted into action with the new suit that's on, right? And you're like, oh, okay, what's going on here? And the side plot of what's happening is Kingpin dealing with that whole tablet of time thing. He's after Boomerang to get the pieces of it. And he's using all of his, his little henchmen in order to try to get this tablet of time. In the meantime, Peter Parker's down on his luck, right? And uh, he needs a job. He doesn't have any money to pay the rent. Typical Peter Parker. And so he goes to Nora Winters as a desperation move. And Nora is like the modern day journalism. Well, she uses social media and all these different types of ways to get the story. Unlike the old traditional way of journalism when J. Jonah ran the papers of the Daily Bugle, right? So he accepts the job offer. And then in the meantime, while she is giving Peter this tour, he comes across the Spider-Man suit, the new suit. And we come to, you know, Nora's making this deal with Spider-Man to wear this suit. And they're going to pay him a lot of money. And the reason why he's wearing this suit is so it's a show, social media ploy right it's to get people to see the point of view of the amazing spider-man so that's why wherever spider-man goes there's like these orbs these cameras watching what he watches and they can make requests uh they can say oh yeah here's a joke can you say that to your villain and stuff like that so it's like a it's, again it's a social media thing and i i kind of don't really agree with that because it's like peter i don't think would stoop that low in in any other normal comic book for money right and uh it's just weird and the costume is kind of weird as well you know it doesn't look all that bad his eyes like dilate like his pupils dilate which is kind of weird so you go into like little orange eyes and then big eyes and and stuff like that it was a, a quite weird and interesting way on why 
Peter would take this offer or Spider-Man to take this offer just for money. And then at the end of the day, I can truly see why he's not going to stick with this because this is going to cause too much of a distraction for him to defeat his enemies or his foes. And uh, it's just going to get out of hand. This definitely does not go with great power comes great responsibility. I understand making money, but that's not what Spider-Man was about. This goes back to the earlier days when he was that, you know, professional wrestler and he was doing things for money. And that's basically what he's doing here. So I don't agree with why he is actually doing this. So I was definitely disappointed that he would stoop to this level um, just for income, right? So kind of weird. Again, huge distraction. And of course, somebody that he's close to by the time we get to the end of this book is in danger, okay? Which is Boomerang and which is uh, Gog. So I don't agree with what he did here. He totally forgot the origin of his original story so why nick spencer decided to go this route i don't know i don't think peter would ever forget what happened to him in the early days of why great power comes great responsibility uncle ben situation right so this is kind of weird i don't see this lasting more than two two issues okay so the next book we're going to be talking about today guys is the other spider-man book that was released it's non-stop spider-man this is issue one written by joe kelly and chris bocciolo was the the artist in the main story so there we have it this has been a title that's been in the making for a very long time and let me just say that i actually liked the story that's going to be leading up to the main event of this book than the main story that was happening in this Reason being is I'm not a crazy fan of Bachelot's artwork. Um, it's very, I don't know, it's its not clean enough for me. It's a little bit jagged. I don't like the outlines around Spider-Man. And honestly, I get what they're going for here. It's nonstop Spider-Man. It's supposed to be full of action. But it was just too much on the page to digest. It just seemed like it was very hectic and all over the place. And then for some reason, you know, obviously we get this this uh this scene in here that has to deal with awake and um i didn't like the way peter was drawn and it kind of interrupted the flow of the story but i understand why they did it but i didn't care about all the characters that spider-man was fighting in this issue and i didn't care about <laughs> these these drugs that were being used that killed his friend and who this girl was like i i couldn't get attached there were just seemed like there was so much going on with nonstop Spider-Man. I was just like, wait a second, just slow down. Let me, you know, grasp what's going on in here. But there was all this crazy throwing around and thrusting through windows and twips and just spider webs flying everywhere. I was just like, oh my God. And so, and it's funny because at the end of it, it's like a, you know, introduction or a teaser trailer to a movie. And I thought that was kind of cool. So there was definitely elements when it came to nonstop Spider-Man that I really enjoyed, but there was just too much going on on the page. And I, I really didn't enjoy that. So you could see that here as well. Okay. Just all this paneling and stuff, just very, very busy. Now, when I got to the second part of this story on who the big bad is going to be in the future, that I actually enjoyed. We get to see a story with Hydra going on and Baron Zemo, and they're talking about how Hydra is going to be, you know, come on top again. And then we get to see Baron Zemo put these wannabes in their place. And I thought that was really good. And the artwork in here was very clean, and that I enjoyed. Like here, I could actually see what's going on. That was action. That was plentiful. I had a lot of fun reading this. And based off of seeing what's going on in this particular story, I found myself vested here. So I was like, okay, because of what happened in the second part of this story or the backup part of it makes me want to continue this book. However, if it ended just like with that one story, I would definitely would have probably dropped this. That's how 
you know, unexcited I was for it and just like my mind was all boggled out of control there. So anyway, that's nonstop Spider-Man. I say definitely, you know, based off of that story, I say definitely pick that one up. All right, guys, so the next book we're going to be talking about today is Taskmaster. This is issue four. Now, this series has definitely been a pleasant surprise. Uh, artistically, it's been really good. The story has been really good as well. Here's some of the artwork. It, again, it always delivers each and every month uh, when it does come out. And this time, we wind up seeing Taskmaster wind up going to Wakanda, and he has to fight I'm not sure if I say her name right, Akoi. You know, it's the war general for uh, Black Panther. And he has to get like the eye signature from her in order to complete his mission. He has to clear his name uh, because he's been accused of killing Maria Hill. And Nick Fury says, hey, Taskmaster, if you do this mission for me, um, you know, we can try to get your name cleared for the accusation of you killing Maria Hill. And then in this whole time, Natasha Romanoff has been after him. What makes this book so good is just his narration and his fighting skills. You really appreciate him as a, I guess, villain, uh, you know, at this point, or maybe even an anti hero. Like he could be kind of turning the curve here to where he's not necessarily all that bad or he could just be after himself so by the time you wind up getting to the end of this book he winds up accomplishing his mission and then we wind up seeing that natasha obviously is after him now out of all the issues in this particular um series i feel like taskmaster issue four was probably the weakest of them all However, that is not taking away from this series. It actually was a very good read, and I'm now anxiously awaiting to see how this series concludes. So if you haven't picked up Taskmaster yet, you might be able to find these books on the rack. I definitely say pick this series up. You will not be disappointed. I still think nothing is going to top issue two. When you read issue two, if you haven't read it yet, you're going to be in for an awesome treat there. So enjoy Taskmaster when you get to it. Next, we're going to be talking about a book that definitely... Um, it's definitely one to talk about. So this one is Children of the Atom. This is issue one. Now, I feel like we've been talking about this book for such a long time. Like, when is it going to come out? What are these characters about? Where did they come from? Like, why aren't they on Krakoa? And honestly, this book in many ways is basically a train wreck and this is crazy i didn't even hardly handle this comic book and look at the ink smudges on it it's it's crazy like i wasn't even holding it oh my god that's so frustrating anyway luckily i got a variant cover and i was going to do a father son on this book but after reading this uh this particular issue my son is not going to understand anything of what goes on in this comic book because this book is not new reader friendly whatsoever you can't get attached to any of the characters because it's just all over the place and disjointed let's take a look at the artwork though in this book all right so here we get to see some of the facial expressions in here which are okay you know some of it is fine but again i just feel like there's a lot going on and when you get introduced to a team and right away it's a battle scene how are you going to get accustomed to these characters how can you appreciate the battle scene in itself right here's all you get from that first page and you're like okay i guess these are the good guys right and then right away you get thrown into this mix of panels and you're just like oh my gosh like what's happening you haven't had time to digest who's good, who's bad, what powers they do, why are they wearing these costumes and all this other things. I think if you were going to do a battle, do a battle like in the middle of the book, introduce the characters, who they are, where they came from, what they represent. And this book is just, again, all over the place, okay? We get to see this person by the name of who's a female by the name of uh, Benny or Beatrice, and her name is Cyclopsless, and there's sh like Cherub or Shrub or whatever, Marvel guy, um, Gimmick, which is like a Gambit, and Daycrawler. 
Like, why do they have these names? We don't know. Why do they have these costumes? We don't know. We find out at the end of this book that they try to go through a Krakoan portal and they can't go through the portal. So it leads to believe that these guys are not actually mutants. And they were approached by like Pixie and Magma to come through. And at first they're like, nah, I don't want to come through because, you know, we have family here. And they're like, okay, fine. And then you get to see a little scene with Wolverine and Marvel Girl and or Jean Grey and Cyclops. And they're like, oh, we need to get these guys here. And so they're debating. And again, there's just a lot going on. And there's too much dialogue, and it just talks in circles. Dialogue after dialogue after dialogue. We get to learn a little bit about Beatrice, and her best friend, I think, is Carmen, I think her name is, who's the Gambit character. But we don't know, again, anything about them, like where they came from. Instead, they're talking about a concert to going to Dazzler, and how about one guy likes to play basketball on the basketball team, but we don't know, again, anything about them. This was the issue that you needed to really introduce these characters and get you to know them. That's all I would have loved to see. And then maybe get to a battle by the time we got to the end of this book. Not go through some Krakoan portal. Again, so many directions. Don't know where to go. And at the end of the day, when it comes to these group of characters, does it have potential? I think it does. However, I just think this first issue was a mess, and it's a matter if you're going to give a second issue a try. Now, being that this was delayed for whatever reason, I feel like hopefully by the time we get to second issue that some of our answer or questions will be answered and we find out who these characters are and maybe we get some more character development. I just wish that Vita Aliala, I don't know how to say her name, would just pick a direction where there was just many directions and you're just like what the hell <laughs> you know i don't i didn't learn anything from this first issue you know i almost knew just as much before even reading it that's the way i can look at it when it comes to children of the atom it was just whatever you know so definitely a disappointment I might give the second issue a try. If the second issue does not give me any answers uh, or doesn't go in a clean direction, I'm probably going to drop this particular book. So I'll leave this up to you if you're going to pass up on this book. So now let's talk about a book that is actually at a whole other level. And when you talk about a good comic book in a well-written comic book, it's going to be the Joker issue one. Okay, the only thing that I could say, and I'm not going to say it ruins the book, but takes away from the book is the punchline story at the end, because I'm paying five dollars for this book. And what I wanted was a few extra pages of this Joker story than that punchline story that's going on when she's in jail and nothing really happens in that. Like, who cares what's going on in that, right? So, the Joker issue one is written by James Tynion, and the artwork is done by uh, Jillian March, and the artwork in this book is top-notch. This is A-plus artwork. This is artwork that you can say, okay, this rises to the occasion. This is better than any Marvel comic or DC comic out there. Check out the way Batman looks in this book, right? Look at Commissioner Gordon. Um, let's look at, let's see, let's see. Let's see some of these other pages in here, right? Uh, there's some creepy pictures of like Joker in here that looks fantastic. And again, all these facial expressions are absolutely gorgeous. Who is the blonde, blonde bombshell in this book? Like absolutely gorgeous looking book beautiful like colors are so well done just awesome to look at okay let's talk about this story so in the beginning if you guys watch my channel for any length of time you know that when it comes to this joker series i was always really on the fence about it because i'm like do we need a joker comic book right and after reading this i was like yes because even though it's focused around the joker 
This story was more, more focused about Commissioner Gordon. And that's what made it really so good. And we got to see a little bit of the history of Commissioner Gordon, how he was a young, you know, police officer, just got the promotion, uh, you know, to Gotham and how it wound up becoming this whole pit, right, of existence for him. And now he's basically retired. He's basically just a broken down old man that at the end of the day, what has he accomplished? He has basically accomplished nothing, right? And his boogeyman is the Joker, where an old colleague of him told him, you know, who is your boogeyman? One day you're going to have that boogeyman because they had a conversation at the bar. He's like, this is the guy who I saw. And it was a very dark story, right? So based off of the pages of Batman, we got to see Arkham Asylum uh, wind up getting... Um, bombed with joker gas it was planted in there during the joker war and it was supposed to go off months later this is why you wind up seeing why bane died okay and some other people died as well so this was a really big deal joker left his mark commissioner gordon again just has nothing so while he's walking around kind of feeling down on himself saying look at this town you know all the kids appreciate who punchline is they represent the clown he just doesn't agree what's going on um, he was offered a position uh, to be commissioner or go on, uh, again and he turned it down because he just wants nothing to do with it anymore he's retired right and so he gets a call from this girl this woman who's obviously really young she's younger than barbara gordon um, and we find out that she wants him to kill the Joker. And just the whole offer alone had me intrigued. Like, she's like, yeah, he was on one of our private um, planes and he wasn't authorized to be on the landing strip and he caused nothing but problems. And what makes this very interesting is who is this female? We don't know her real name. She goes by the name of Granetta, I think it is, or Cressetta. And we don't know what family she's from. We don't know anything about her. But all we do know is she wants the Joker killed and she wants Commissioner Gordon to do it. And she doesn't want Batman involved in it as well. And since Commissioner Gordon is doesn't have anything, no money, nothing, the offer that's on the table is to kill him is $25 million, and while he's on the mission, a bank card that has unlimited funds. And he's like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do with it. But as of right now, he's not sure if he's going to take the offer. And it made for a very interesting cliffhanger. And in the meantime, we wind up seeing Joker in Belize in a house that he took over and he killed everyone that lived in there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the issue ends, right? And uh, so now we're obviously going to see what Commissioner Gordon actually decides, right? If he's going to take the offer or not. I'm led to believe that he's going to definitely take the offer. Now, when it comes to this book, this book was absolutely phenomenal. It was so well written. I think James Tinian has got Batman nailed right now. This universe is perfect. He he wrote the Commissioner Gordon on just a, a, a way that, you know, after all he's been through, you can just see that he's just this tired, broken down old guy. And it's just like, this is the last great hurrah for him, right? He's offered this a moment this one last time to go out on top. And it's like, I want to see that story. I want to see how he's going to come up with the plan to kill the Joker. Because again, he gets anything he wants. So, so well done there when it comes to Commissioner. Again, who is this girl? Where is she from? Who is her little weird sidekick or big sidekick, right? How is Bane going to come back if he comes back? Because supposedly he's dead. Like, there's a lot of questions here. It's a great mystery. And I say definitely buy this comic book if you were unsure at first. So there you guys have it. There is a, another episode of After the Pull. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Now, guys, in the comments below, tell me... What was your favorite book that you read this week? If I haven't mentioned any here, 
um, right now because what it's going to do is it's going to enter you in my Road to 10K uh, contest where I pick a random video and I will pick a comment from YouTube Generator and you can win that mystery prize. Again, it's the Road to 10K. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And until next time, guys, I'm going to leave you more content right here. In fact, I'm going to leave you my comic book haul so you can see all the comic books I picked up this past week. So until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer saying thank you so much for watching and enjoy those comics, everyone. Take care. Bye.